I noticed that the volume uh, suddenly dropped. I didn't change anything. Somehow maybe this uh, headset I bought from Amazon is uh, dying. It happened to me with the previous webcam and the previous headset. So maybe Amazon is selling junk or something is going wrong. But either way, uh, the last few podcasts I think have a very low volume. I've tried to crank it up here and I'll see how this is doing. So let's look at the processes that actually determine the distribution of absolute vorticity. So we'll look at uh, the equation, vorticity equation uh, d eta dt, time variation of the total uh, vorticity or the absolute vorticity is a term of uh, advection of the vorticity and uh, vertex stretching. So divergence of the flow is going to stretch uh, the vertex. So that's that term and this is the dissipation term. So you remember way back in uh, chapter 3 we had looked at the vorticity equation and we had written this vorticity conservation equation in the tropics for length scales of 10 to the 7 with Rossby number less than 1 which gave us baroclinic processes and the coupling of the upper and lower levels. Basically diabetic heating was giving us vertex stretching which was uh, able to create barotropic processes despite the tropics being mostly baro, uh, baroclinic processes. Uh, remember Charney's conundrum with the 10 to the 6 meter uh, dimensional analysis and so on. Okay. There appears to be then a dual role for the divergent part of the wind field. No, I jumped something here. Okay. Uh, yes, okay. So uh, interpreting this is that as you cross the equator and you approach the zero vorticity line, um, the uh, advection term and the vertex stretching term uh, along with the dissipation term have to be uh, understood. What is uh, changing uh, as you come close to the uh, zero vorticity line? So I'm just going to summarize the results and as I uh, said I'm going to skip some of the details. There appears to be a dual role for the divergent part of the wind field. So you remember it's crossing the equator converging into the uh, ITCZ uh, going across the zero vorticity line. The divergent wind is responsible for creating the conditions that lead to near equatorial inertial instability via the interhemispheric advection of countersigned absolute vorticity. So that is a critical role which is uh, related to the cross equatorial pressure gradient. The divergent wind also accelerates locally in an effort to mitigate inertially uns uh, unstable conditions caused by the advection of the absolute vorticity across the equator. So it is forced to cross the equator, have this divergent flow up to the zero absolute vorticity line and then there is convergence as we saw. But as it is uh, advecting the vorticity and creating these inertially unstable conditions, uh, it's also um, trying to uh, basically mitigate the inertially unstable uh, conditions. So you can look at it in terms of vertical and latitudinal structures to look at the secondary circulation that gets set up uh, in the Atlantic and Indian Oceans and then the Pacific Ocean in the next. So looking at the, the caption first then, latitude height cross <coughs> cross sections of circulations, northward divergent wind uh, in the topmost panels, vertical velocity in the pressure coordinate in the middle panels, and divergence in the lowest panel, uh, Atlantic Ocean, Indian Ocean, and the uh, western and eastern, central and uh, eastern Pacific Oceans, uh, looking at DJF and DJ. So the bold black line in each panel shows the location of the mean absolute vorticity uh, zero line. The dashed line represents uh, the equator. So the magnitudes of the three quantities are given by the common color code at the base of the figures which is given here. So the units are different. VD in meter per second, divergent winds, uh, vertical velocities in uh, pascals per second and divergence is in uh, 10 to the minus 6 per second. So if you look at uh, the uh, divergent winds, uh, obviously in DJF the uh, uh, ITCZ is closer to the equator so you can see that there is uh, cross uh, 
equatorial gradient uh, or the ADIF uh, being negative, but the conditions here are stable, so you don't get much inst uh, instabilities here. So you can see the convergence uh, here. Uh, JJA, it shifts, so you have uh, serious cross equatorial uh, meridional winds coming into the ITCZ. So you can see the convection is going to be uh, on the convergence side. Uh, that's the equator. So then you have uh, vorticity changing sign now the other way because in the upper level you have advection of vorticity uh, into the southern hemisphere. Okay, so that's the vertical velocity. So you have um, the vertical velocity that's uh, related to the convection and you have the uh, secondary flow. So you have the main circulation happening here, your secondary uh, divergence convergence cell that we talked about. We will see it again more carefully, uh, much more clear here in the June, July, August, where the convection is stronger and ITCZ is uh, further north. Because it's averaged from 0 to 30 and the ITCZ is tilting from West Africa towards Brazil, uh, this figure is not so clear. But divergence, you can see again the couplet uh, of divergence, convergence, and uh, the secondary circulation here in the vertical as well. In uh, more complicated, but still there, uh, fairly clear. Uh, Indian Ocean is a complicated story, as we know. In DJF, there is northeasterly monsoon. ITCZ is to the south, so you have uh, cross equatorial. Uh, ADA zero line in the southern hemisphere. Uh, WP corresponds to that. Uh, vertical velocity is here negative because P decreases and you have the divergence field. In the summer months you have uh, the uh, <coughs> maximum convection happening basically over land but this is averaged over parts of Bay of Bengal and Arabian Sea so I don't know how much you want to uh, spend time on this, but the Pacific will give uh, somewhat of a, a clearer idea, especially the difference between the Central and Eastern Pacific Oceans. So DJF, uh, ITCZ to the south, uh, JJ, ITCZ uh, way north, but when averaged in the Central Pacific, as we remember, the weak cross equatorial pressure gradient. Uh, so the uh, ADA line is basically hugging the equator uh, from the surface to the upper atmosphere, 200 hectopascal. Uh, WP shows uh, vertical motion uh, here in DJF, but stronger over here. So you have again the secondary circulation now in the northern hemisphere, uh, obviously. And this is the subsidence on the uh, equatorial side, which is going to bring the dry uh, winds down and actually uh, uh, help uh, mitigate the instability as well. Okay, kind of descriptions how instability is being set up, convection is being driven, and then convection is, of course, a way to remove the instabilities. How is it done? It's also done through this uh, secondary circulation, but you can see clearly the divergence is stuck uh, on the, the zero absolute vorticity is stuck on the equator. Whereas if you go uh, in the East Pacific, you will see much more of a migration in the summer months uh, where the ITCZ sits. Remember the Eastern uh, Pacific, this uh, region on the equator is called SSTs, so ITCZ is to the north and you can clearly see a much more of a strong cross equatorial uh, gradient or cross equatorial migration of the uh, zero absolute vorticity line uh, in, at the uh, lower levels and uh, at the upper level. Okay, so this is how it looks. Schematic diagram showing the circulation found in the latitude height plane in regions where the conditions uh, of near equatorial inertial instability exist in a conditionally unstable atmosphere. I should correct this silly thing and put the figure behind. Uh, send the figure to the back so now you can read uh, the caption. Uh, 
So the bold curve uh, uh, denotes zero absolute, absolute vorticity line here. Eta equals zero is going up. Um, with negative uh, absolute vorticity to the left of the south. The second shallower circulation is evident. Blue and pink squares denote maximum divergence and convergence. So you have maximum divergence and convergence, divergence, convergence, and then you have the main circulation on top. So you have deep convection, rising motion, and you have uh, convergence and then sinking motion. So you have the um, Hadley cell uh, on this side, you have on the other one on the other side, but we are mostly interested in the cross equatorial processes driving uh, the convection. Okay, so the main story here is that this secondary circulation bringing down the dry uh, air down, compressing and heating, and uh, compensated by radiative cooling is important for. Uh, the uh, vorticity balance as well. Okay, so yellow shows here the maximum divergent wind bisected by the eta equal to zero line. Okay, so just get used to the idea of what we are doing. We are basically looking at processes that determine the absolute vorticity distribution in the horizontal in the vertical including the secondary circulation which also is involved in the balance. Mm -hmm.